industry's top podcast on the subject of internet marketing. I'm your host, Glenn Thayer, and today we're going to bring you part two of effective email marketing. I'm here with the CEO of Intuitive Websites, Thomas Young, and internet marketing specialist, Dennis McCarthy. How's it going, guys? Hi, Glenn. So Doing good. Let's get back, right back where we left off here, and let's talk about the best software for sending out emails and doing email marketing. Well, you know, most people use either um, a Microsoft product like, um, um, like Outlook or something Outlook like that. or Outlook Express, or if you're on a Mac, you might use the mail program. So most people use a program that sits on their hard drive, or they'll go to a website and access mail from a website. But when you're getting ready to, to actually do mass emails, you really need to get off of your hard drive and use uh, the servers provided by an off-the-shelf software company. So and, what, what does uh, that look like? Well, there's, you, these, are, these are products that you access via the Internet. And two good examples would be vertical response and constant contact. And there's a lot of things that they can do for you that you can't even begin to do running an email program from, from a, your own computer. Now, you mentioned off-the-shelf programs. Is this something you can go and purchase at a store? Or is this something at a, at a particular website that you subscribe to and it handles it for you? It's a subscription. And, um, so it's a, it's a website then? It's a website. You sign up and it's something like 20 bucks a month usually. And uh, it allows you to upload your email address list and create the email right online. And the beauty part, of course, is that the emails, when they get sent, they get sent from that other server and not from your Outlook program one email at a time. So how does that look? You, know, you mentioned that uh, you know, some around 20 bucks a month or something. I'm going to make an assumption that there is a cap on how many emails you can send at $20. Yeah, and that's really why the, the area where you need to shop around. If you have a whole bunch of addresses, you need to find the people that will give you the best value in terms of high volume. If you've only got a small list, you know, 500 names, you could probably get by with something that charges on a per email basis for 6 $7 a month. So you really want to look out. If you've got something where you've got 100,000 names where you're going to send out an email marketing campaign, you need to make sure that you're getting your money's worth. And You'll want shop to shop around. for price then. Okay. And and the the features that these software programs provide you are just are just so great, especially when it comes to the subscribe and unsubscribe. And that's the one of the most important things you want to do in your email program. You don't want to do the spam thing, which we talked about in, in the previous podcast. And one of the things that spammers don't do is allow you to unsubscribe. <laughs> They'd be out of business pretty quick if we could do that. And another thing about that is if, if you don't if you don't cherish the idea of sitting there managing the database yourself and having to do the data entry whenever somebody new comes along and having to do the data entry whenever somebody wants to unsubscribe, you got to use a program that allows the users themselves to do the management of your database. So it's basically, if you're use, utilizing this web, web-based web software, it allows you to upload your newsletter or email campaign that you want to send out. It will send it out. And if somebody's on the receiving end of that email says, you know, I don't want to get any more emails from your company. They just hit unsubscribe. You don't do anything. And that web program handles it all for you. That's what you're saying, correct? Exactly. And another beautiful thing about these programs is that they're very, very specific about not letting people be spammers. So when you sign up, you have to have a physical address and phone number associated with your account. And uh, they're very particular about making sure you're not a spammer because that's that they could go to business with something like that. Yeah, if you're if you're a spammer and you attempt to use, say, a vertical response, and you start doing what spammers do, vertical response will cut you off. So exactly. spammers have to find other ways to do it. Now, the other key thing you get is is incredible stats. I mean, you you basically get the same kind of stats from these email programs as you would from your website stats. We we, we talked we've talked about those in previous podcasts. You know, you can see things like how many of the emails have been open, what, what links were clicked on within the email, and you can take a look at how many people unsubscribed, how many new people subscribed, and really have a comprehensive stats package for your email program. And really the best part is um, all these programs give you a little piece of code that you can put on your website in the top corner, and um, it allows for instant subscriptions. So people just go and type their email address into this little box and possibly their name optionally, and when they hit that submit button, your database gets built. And next time you send out one of your emails, they're just automatically added. And you, you were sleeping while all of that happened. Now, does, it, does that software actually tell you who unsubscribes as well? Like a specific email says, this email unsubscribe? Absolutely. 
So um, you could, if there happen to be one of your friends, you can call them up and go, "Excuse me, why did you unsubscribe from?" Yeah, and they give you <laughs> they give you another statistic, which is bounce rates. Um, how many of those emails get bounced, and they actually manage. Uh, getting rid of the bounced emails on a regular basis so you don't have to deal with that either. There's just so many benefits to using an um, online email program. You know, something that, that I've been wondering about, and I, I, I've dealt a little bit with constant contact, is it possible for somebody to resubscribe that has unsubscribed previously? I don't know, Glenn. <laughs> and that's something I've, I've never seen because I know, once, I know once an email has been removed with some of the programs, it will never be re-added. And I didn't know if there was something, somebody goes, hey, well, I screwed up. They call me up and says, I want to add it back on. I want to be on your email list. Great. Use another email address. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have the answer. Well, we don't. We use vertical response a lot, and we don't have that problem with vertical response. It, people can jump right back in. So they can add back in if they Yeah. All they're doing is removing themselves from the database and putting themselves back on the database. Okay. I, I, I would bet there's preferences for that in the software. There's, a, there's quite a bit of setup when you put this together and all the different kinds of features you want. Well, to here's, here's the real beauty of this software. They, they treat emails as mini advertising campaigns, as they should be. A lot of people make the mistake of creating an email, sending it out through Outlook, and there's no call to action whatsoever. None of the principles of effective marketing are in these emails at all. These programs create what they call offers, and each article in your, say, newsletter has an offer at the bottom of it, and each offer is attached to a web page. So you have to create a separate landing page for each of your email articles in the same way you'd create a separate landing page if you were running Google AdWords or something like that. And uh, that landing page should have all the qualities of a good landing page. It should have a great headline. It should have compelling content. It should have a call to action and an offer itself. That's when your email program can really take off because what you're doing is you're building sales and you're building lead generation with your, every one of your articles in your email. Now, what about privacy policies? Well, they're important. <laughs> now, privacy, privacy policies are one of the things that are very often left out and people don't think about these things. But a good 25%, 30% of web visitors look for privacy policies and make a decision whether or not to do business with you based on, you know, are you going to share my email address with other people? I know you need my email address to confirm my order or to get in touch with me or to subscribe to my newsletter, but what are you going to do with that email address? Am I going to end up on a spam list? And most people surfing the web, and the, you know, this goes for professionals of all kinds, people surfing the web don't have the concept of what spammers do and how they operate. So when they put their, their email address into a box and it goes somewhere, they're thinking, oh my gosh, what did I just do to my inbox? So it's very important for you to be clear on your website and on your email messages that you do not share your email addresses, and we, we don't recommend that you do that. I mean, you need to, your email addresses are for internal use only. Yeah. You should not be in the business of selling email addresses to other companies. You, can, you cannot say that often enough. Just tell people that we, under no circumstances, absolutely will not share your email address with anyone. So what else is important in tracking stats? Well, there's a few key things to think about in, in tracking email stats. And, and something that I, I just want to make real clear, and, and this came up earlier, is that when you're asking people to give you their, their information to subscribe to your email, um, make sure you keep it very simple. In fact, we recommend that it's just name and email address. If you can, just make it email address because then it's very easy and simple for people to type in their email address and click subscribe and they're all set. And when your emails go out with all those offers and all those lead captures, you'll be able to get their name eventually. That's right. And, and you really, I mean, why do you need their name? You just really just need their email. Wouldn't that be just to personalize the email? When it goes out, like it'd say, "Dear Glenn, here's what you're gonna see." I don't think I don't think that's that important. I think it's a nice touch, but I don't think it's that important. People want the content; they're not too concerned about personalization. It, it said, yeah, personalization. Said, Hello, gonna, Tom. It's not gonna give. It's not gonna give you additional conversions because it's personalized. No, I don't think so. I think it's just a a, a nice thing to have. It's gonna be a nice thing to have, but not not essential. What's more important is to get more qualified people subscribing. And busy people just want to put their email in, uh, name or their email address in there and, and be done with it. Well, what about putting uh, hyperlinks in the email? Absolutely. Like I was saying before, the good programs treat every article as an offer. And every article should have a link to a web page, which is a landing page, which has got all the elements of a good landing page. So hyperlinks are very important. And, and, and in fact, you want to track that. In fact, I'll just run down a quick list of things that are important to track on, in your email campaigns. Number one is you want to know how many subscribers you have total. And you want to know how many are being added and how many are dropping. 
And you can actually set very clear business goals around uh, growing your email list. And you should see a direct result in sales and in, in lead generation. You also want to see what emails are being opened, um, which emails were not opened or not looked at, what links within the email were the most popular, and you want to track the effect of your email program on overall sales and conversions. So you should see, if you do a, a, a nice email program, you should see a bump in sales or a, a bump in inquiries and web traffic after each email that's dropped. And Particularly if you have a landing page devoted just to that email article, you'll know exactly how many people responded. Even those who have text-only emails, you'll know exactly how many responded based on how many people hit that page. Absolutely. And, and another question we get all the time is how often should we do an email drop? And, and the response to that is, is generally a rule of thumb is about once every two weeks. Now, it really depends on your business, but once every two weeks at the most is, is usually what most companies need to do for their email drops. If you have uh, special promotions happening or, or new events happening at your company, you might want to go weekly. But any more than that, and you'll, you'll start to be kind of a nuisance. What, our, what many of our clients do is uh, with their newsletter, they avoid direct selling. But every now and then, they'll do a special email which describes a new product. And, and people don't really have a problem with that as long as you're not hitting them over the head with sales messages all the time. Yeah, and I find, too, that you know, most companies, when you think about it, most companies tend to be a little bit timid of using email. In fact, many don't even use it, but those that do tend to be timid. I say, you know, put a program in place, be consistent, drop an email every two weeks, every three weeks, or once a month, and, and I think you'll see some good results. Would you say once a month is viable for, for most people starting an email campaign? I, I would say that's a minimum. I, say, I, would, I, don't, I don't care what size business you have. Um, if it's a one-person operation or if you've got 100,000 employees, you should be emailing your customers and your prospects at least once a month. Well, what if you don't have enough content to keep going? I mean, you say that, you know, minimum you want to do once a month, but as maybe somebody who has a, a, a company of one, what if you don't have enough content? It, wouldn't the fear be there of, of should well, I say, I, getting on people's nerves because you're No, not no, you enough? can get that content. Go to your customers. And, and ask them to tell you 12 things that they like about working with you. Take each of those 12 things and develop them into a monthly newsletter. Another way to do it is to look and see what's happening that month in your business that's exciting or that customers are giving you feedback on or that's different or that's eye-opening. That becomes an email newsletter. It, it, I don't think there's a lack of content that's a problem there. It's really just opening up your eyes to see what's what's happening in the business that should be reported on and communicated. And really, if you run them too infrequently, say every three or four months, people won't know who the heck you are, they won't remember signing up, and they'll just delete it. So guys, why do some emails come out with text only and others have graphics? Well, um, Dennis, why don't you take this question? I think you... In, your, ma in your mail program, you can set whether you want to receive emails as text only or as HTML emails. And um, HTML emails just kind of look like web pages when you get them, and text-only emails are straight text. It's an important consideration when sending emails as an email marketer because um, some people will receive them as text and some as, e as, email, as HTML. So when you're choosing a program to use for your email marketing, you need to choose one that sends both a text and an HTML version of the same email. And one mistake that people make pretty commonly is they don't really spend any time making sure the text-only version looks good. When it's possible up to 30% of the people receiving their newsletter are receiving the text-only version. And, and how do people decide if they want text or, or HTML? And do you know what percentage of, of web users do either or? I don't know exactly, and I'm sure it's changing. Uh, more and more people are accepting HTML. Some people are worried that by accepting HTML email, they're allowing viruses into their system, which is a, a real concern. Uh, the email marketing programs actually use HTML emails to track how many people looked at your email and what they clicked on and to go do all these wonderful reports. If you don't have access to that um, level of detail regarding the user behavior on your email when it's a text only. And that's really why landing pages are so important because then you can track exactly how many people responded to your mail regardless of what your email marketing program tells you. So even though if somebody came in and they said, hey, you know, I'll... I'll send out a text email and you have hyperlinks all throughout that text email, you still can't track it. Uh, it doesn't get tracked back directly in the email marketing program, but you can track on your landing page how many people hit that landing page. So make sure you have a unique landing page. Don't just send them to your home page. Make sure you have a unique landing page and you can see exactly how many people visited on a day-by-day -day basis. So if you're coming up with a special offer, make sure that your 
we have a landing page that has to do with that offer. Exactly. And landing page should have all the qualities of a good landing page like we talked about earlier. And, and test. You know, run an HTML test and then run a text-only test and see what kind of response you get. And you'll get an idea of what are the unique characteristics of your target market and how they use um, HTML, HTML or text uh, email options in their, in their email program that they use on their computer. Would it also be a good idea to talk to some of those people? Call them up on the phone if you know some of the people that are in your database that you're going to be sending emails to. I know it's a little more time consuming, but would a quick that be survey, a yeah, a quick good? survey wouldn't hurt. I mean, you might find that if you're if you're targeted um, subscriber base or, or engineers, you might find engineers are more likely to look at text only. Whereas you're, if you're emailing to graphic designers, maybe they, you know they're going to be more toward HTML. So you really should understand the demographic of your target market. You know, that's a great point, though, Glenn, because even before you start your email marketing program, this is not something we've discussed yet, you should ask your customers what would they like to hear about. You know, so many people just start guessing and throwing out content that customers are not even necessarily interested in. Ask your customers what they'd like to hear about. Yeah, and then you can ask them how you would like to hear it. Exactly. And then, you know, how often would you like to hear from us, too, which is a key thing in, in email marketing. We get that question all the time. Um, and, you know, we recommend that, that you contact people in your database at least once every two weeks, at a minimum once a month. And some of our, our clients say, well, you know, what are you going to say to them once a month? We, how do we get the content? Well, number one is you have to have somebody who's responsible for the email program, who's responsible for nailing down content. And I think one of the best ways to find out, uh, uh, you know, what the topic of the email should be is from asking your customers, you know, hey, Tell us some of the things that you like about working with us. Or tell us some of the, the reasons that, that you do business with us. Those are the topics for email newsletters or for email blasts. You can also look at what's happening in your business that month. And that right there, you, you have probably two or three examples every month of something that happened in the business that's worth telling prospects and customers about. That's how you, that's how you develop email content. Awesome. Well, we end each podcast with an action item. Well, what are the key action items for the listener this podcast? Well, we're going to actually cover two podcasts because this is part two of effective email marketing. The first thing you need to do is, is look at email marketing from a strategic standpoint. Determine what you specifically want to accomplish from email marketing. It might be increased sales. It might be increased leads, increased traffic to the website. Have a very specific and clear objective and then set a strategy for how that's going to happen. Hopefully in these podcasts, we've given you quite a few ideas on, on how to do that. Um, from this strategy, then, will come a proactive action plan. And there's several steps that you need to do. Probably one of the first steps would be to research an off-the-shelf email program, such as Constant Contact or Vertical Response. There are lots of choices. Find one that works for you. Start gathering email addresses within your company. Segment them appropriately based on your offerings. And then take some of the guidelines we've talked about here and do tests. Watch the data that comes back, see what's most effective, and talk to your customers. And then I think you can put an email program together that can do wonderful things for your business. Not only is it cost effective, you get great return, but it actually will add value to customers and prospects, and that's why they do business with you to start with. Wonderful. Well, thanks, Tom. Thanks, Dennis. This has been the Intuitive Website's Internet Marketing Podcast. And for more information and to see all of the available podcasts and much more, visit intuitivewebsites.com. Thank you.